Today's topic is number formats and conventions, and this will be found on page 12 of your textbook. The first thing we're going to look at are the different ways of expressing and reading numbers. Well, in grade 8, you dealt with the whole numbers, and they're used to, for example, describe someone's age, 33,000, 1994, 1,526,796. We also use decimals, decimal numbers, 15.3 or 10.3, but we prefer to write it as 10,3. We prefer to use the, the decimal comma. Numbers in words, and there are reasons for that, that we would explore 4 billion, 15,3 billion, we also use numbers to express percentages, and it's a good time now to make sure you understand that we can get a percentage that is greater than 100%. You can get a number that is 200% or something that is 200% better or 200% worse. The other formats are the fractions. Half of the class got A's. Three quarters of the rugby team pass their fitness test. Numbers are used to describe different things. For example, quantities. The number of days in our cycle is seven. The number of people who are going on camp is maybe 200. Labels are used, we use dates, for example, in labels, 1994, or you get expiry dates on tinned food or preserved food. Money, for example, a man earned 33,000 for a particular job, or the government is spending 104 billion on education this year. Ways of reading numbers and writing numbers in words. If you can read three digits linked together, you can read a number of any magnitude. What we have to remember is that the whole numbers are grouped into threes from right to left. Each group has a name, the group of ones, the group of thousands, millions, billions, trillions, and so on. Each group has hundreds, tens, and, and units, hundreds, tens, and units. What you need to remember is that we are not going to use unit. We will use hundreds, tens, and thousands, but we won't use the unit. So you would have hundreds, tens, billions, hundreds, tens, billions, and the one we actually don't include the group name. So let's look at an example. So if I have the number 1428, 1420897, the first thing we're going to do is you're going to split that number in groups of three from right to left. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And remember I said that if you can read any three digits, up to three digits on their own, you can read a number of any magnitude. So I can read 14, I can read 208, 597. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to remember your group names. So we have the group of ones, the group of thousand, the group of million, the group of billion, and remember that each one of those has hundreds, tens, and units. We are going to cancel the unit because we're not saying units. And now I fill in those spaces from right to left. So, and I do that so that I don't miss any um, places. Seven, nine, five, four, eight, zero, oh, two. Four, one. If you're doing an exercise, all you need to do is group them in threes. Remember, those are the ones, these are the thousands, and these are the millions. So you would then be able to say 14,208,597. You see, in this case, we never say the name one. If I have to write that out, Everything has to be in words. So I've got 
I want to have a look at another number. If you have, for example, 430,62 billion. You are also expected to be able to write that using digits only or in words as you did the previous one. So sometimes you need to write it in digits or in words like that. So what we do is this decimal comma here separates your whole number. So I've got 430 whole billion. So I go and look for the billion. I've got 430, 430 billion. This is less than a billion, so it's a fraction of a billion. Your comma would ideally be placed here. But remember, we're dealing with whole numbers, so the comma doesn't actually go there, but it's an indicator. We have comma 6, 2. See, the comma's not actually there. And what we do is we fill up all these spaces with zeros. And there you've written your number using digits. So this will be 430 billion, 620 million. I've just spoken about the thousand separator, so let's have a look here. You will often see, well not that often, but you will see numbers that have more than one comma. And when we look at that, we realize, well, that is not a whole and a part of a whole because you can't have a part of a part of a whole. So you realize that that has been used to separate your ones, your thousands, and your millions. So that is 2,459,694. But we prefer to write that number with spaces. So we don't use the decimal comma, we use spaces. You will also see in some places, often on the shelves in shops, we can see that a point is used. Instead of the decimal comma, a point is used instead of our decimal comma. What does this actually mean? Well, it tells you that the whole is separated from the fraction. So the decimal comma separates the whole and the fraction part of the number. So here it is a whole 54 rand and here it is 99 cents or part of one rand. If we look at Apartment numbering. For example, you've got 1305. What happens here is there are not 1305 apartments in this block. What they do is this normally indicates the floor. So this is on the 13th floor and it's apartment number 5. And note they write 1305, 13th floor and number five, because you could get the 13th floor an apartment 50. Let's look what happens when we look at the cricket scoreboard. Over here, they tell you that there are 12,5 overs. So that means 12 completed overs, and then I have five balls. In other words, five balls have been bowled, in the next over, how many over, how many balls in an over? Well, there are six. So I would need one more ball. So the bowler has one more ball to bowl until the 13th over is completed. Negative and positive numbers as indicators. Well, when we talk about weather, if my temperature is minus five, that is really, really cold. If my temperature is 30, for some of us, that's really, really hot. So in weather forecasting, we use positive and negative numbers to indicate temperature. 
If I look at the thermometer, red, so this is hot, this is going to be my high, and my high is approximately 30 degrees. If I look at this thermometer, it is the blue one, so that is the cold, and you can see the numbers are going 40, 30, so they are descending. Here is your zero, so this is 20 degrees below zero. We also use number lines to indicate numbers less than zero are the negative numbers, numbers greater than zero are the positive numbers. In an elevator, for example, this is often labeled as the G, ground floor. If I press negative three on the keypad, that means that I'm going three floors below ground or basement number three. If I press two on the keypad, that means that I am going two stories or two floors up. Negative and positive numbers as indicators. Numbers can show reduction and deduction. So for example, if I have a clothing account and I see that on my account, it means that I owe the store 358 Rand 86. If this was an electricity bill, it would show that last month I paid 358 Rand and 86 cents. I now owe 127.68. That is my new balance. Financial indicators are seen on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, for example. This you often see while you're watching the news. It's a strip that runs through the bottom of the, the news screen. Financial 15, if it is a red arrow, it means that that price has gone down or it's reduced or it has become less. And this is a reduction of 0,63% or negative 0,63%. If I look at the Rand Sterling exchange rate, it has gone up by 11 and that was 3, 0,36%. That is all the explanation for numbers, for number formats and convention. Please complete exercise one on page 15.